seconds to move. Okay, for our activity, as far as what you need to know is what you did in the last lab. Uh, and it would be some, something kind of simple like this. Let's say we have a generic reaction. Okay, let's write this, even though they're gases, let's write a Kc for this. Kc is the concentration of NH3 squared over N2 times H2 cubed. So that would be generally what we would do. We could solve an ice table problem for this, you know, if they gave us initial concentrations, that sort of thing. But you didn't ask me about that, so I won't cover that. Uh, but if you're asked for activities, it's still a Kc. But you just write activities here, everything else looks the same. Activity of ammonia squared, activity of nitrogen, activity of hydrogen cubed. The activity is just the activity coefficient, one way of defining it, the activity coefficient, in this case times the concentration. So that would be gamma, the activity coefficient for ammonia squared times NH3, concentration squared, over gamma for N2, times N2 concentration, times gamma cubed for H2, times the H2 concentration cubed. So you can see if I circle these, the only difference is what I'm circling right now, the gammas. Those numbers vary from 0 to 1. In our class, typically we're assuming they're 1. And so we ignore them completely. They're there, but we're assuming they're 1. In your lab, you didn't do that. Uh, what would be the only possible way you could have a question like this? Gamma has to be given. If you don't see a gamma, you're consciously or unconsciously assuming it's one. If you see a gamma, just literally plug it in. Okay, here, it would be a number between zero and one. So that's, that's all you really have to know for activities as far as the final. Next. Let's tackle all these here. Okay? All the G, K, S, etc. There's just a couple equations to know as far as the N part for thermo. There's the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. There's the, and then there can be standards here. There can be no standards there or standards. This delta G has to have a standard. Delta G is minus RT ln K. There's also the delta G without a standard is delta G standard plus RT ln Q. Uh, there's a couple, those are probably the most common that you would use. There's also the formation reactions or formation equations. That means where you go products minus reactants. We'll do an example in just a moment on that. Uh, so all the formations, this will go, we can do a formation for uh, type calculation for delta G, a formation. A delta H, we did that at the beginning of the quarter, and then the, the, mol, the molar entropies. So all those three variables could have a formation kind of calculation associated with it. <coughs> also, there's uh, a couple equations you won't use as much. I'll change colors. Uh, the second law you might use occasionally. Delta S of the universe is delta S of the system plus delta S of the surroundings, and that has to be greater than zero. That's the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, this one, you can get either it's from the molar entropies or it's given. Delta S of the surroundings is equal to a negative delta H of the system divided by T. Okay, so that's a way that that can be calculated. I don't know, I don't think I have an example of that one. Uh, and that's most of your equations for that chapter that you'd really use. As far as mathematically what you might use, yeah, that's, that's about it. So we'll do an example, um, but if you just have these kind of clear, the bottom one again, you're not gonna use as much. It's really the top <coughs> four, if you will. So remember that can have standards or not standards. Okay, let me ask you just a conceptual question about this. Okay, delta G versus delta G standard. 
Which one of those two is a value? Standard or not? This is a value. It's a constant. It's calculated at standard conditions, standard temperature and pressure. That number is practically not going to change. Okay, it's constant. Uh, this number is that, if it's not a value, what is it? It could really be anything. It could be anything because Q changes, and so that causes this to change. When this value here, where my pen is, is equal to zero, that's equilibrium. Okay? Okay, if delta G is equal to zero at equilibrium, is this equal to zero? Okay, if this one on the left is equal to zero, will this one be equal to zero? No. At equilibrium, can we predict this number on the, where my pen is? Delta G standard, is that? Meaning, do we know if it's greater than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero at equilibrium? No. You don't know, it's just a number. You calculate it using probably the equation up above or the formation. Those are kind of the two ways to calculate this one. So it's just going to be a constant. It's tabulated. It's not going to be equal to delta G, except in extremely rare circumstances. They're not equal. This is going to be a number. It's the delta G of standard conditions. We have standard conditions because we want to tabulate it, say, at 25. So it's easy to look up. This could have an infinite number of temperatures, so we can't tabulate it. Okay? And it could be any value. This is what you're looking for when you're determining if something's really at equilibrium. Unless you happen to be at standard conditions. Okay? So if it's standard conditions, then you would focus on this one. But that's kind of rare in the problem. All right, so I just wanted to make clear the difference. All the ones with standards are set values. Calculated at standard, all standard conditions. All right, I have, a, I think, a sample question here somewhere that I wanted to try that I haven't done in class yet, so I thought it would be exciting. Oh, now I can't remember if I did this in class. <laughs> Wait, did I do this one? I have another one if I already did this one. I don't remember. Nope. Okay, I did it. My class fell. We forgot. All right. Uh, is it readable? Can you pretty much read the numbers? Yeah. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. I'll give you a moment to write this down. Uh, and then we'll give it a try. Again, focus on those equations that I just wrote down. It's going to be the prime, well, long answer questions. Those are the primary equations you're going to use. I know got smudged a little bit here, but we'll work on it. Okay. Uh, by the way, who's uh, who's here not in my class? Oh my, God. <laughs> my class is not even here. <laughs> what, what class are you from? Ing? Are most of you Ing? Yes. yes. No, okay. What, what's the other class? Hayashi. Hayashi? How did you find out about this? <laughs> I mean, it's fine that you're here, but I'm just curious. Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> okay. And who else is teaching this course? Tupac is here, I guess. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right, well, welcome to my style of teaching. It'll be a little different than what you're used to, I suppose. All right, let's try this. By the way, I might see some of you in the summer if you're taking two seats. That'd be awesome. Okay, so find delta G. Is it spontaneous? There's actually two ways we can find delta G from the information given. Let's look at our formulas here. I could either do it the easy way and use the delta G of formation values and go products minus reactants. Or I could do it the hard way, which I probably won't, uh, which is find delta H standard from here and then find delta S standard from the middle row and then use this formula because I found delta H, delta S, T would be, what's T? Yeah, 25 or 298. You know that because, yeah, it's just nothing else is told to you. So you can assume the standard temperature. If it's told to you, use that temperature, of course. But if they don't tell you, it's 25. So you could either use this top one in conjunction with the formation or just the formation for the delta G. So let's do it the easy way. Uh, so for the easier route here, yeah, I need to be able to see this 
numbers. Uh, let me rewrite the reaction. It's NH3 plus HCl. Those are both gases. Goes to a solid NH4Cl. Delta G uh, standard is what we want to know. For delta G standard, it's products. That was minus 2O2.6. And then I like to put all the products in a bracket. And then you subtract all the reactants. So I like to put all the reactants in a bracket. Uh, there's an NH3 and it's only one of them. Uh, it's minus 16.45. And then there's uh, HCl, there's only one of them. And that's 95.30. Make sure you distribute the negative sign here appropriately. I got minus 91.2 kilojoules. And you can kind of decide whether you put kilojoules or kilojoules per mole here. Either as far as I'm going to be acceptable. All right. Uh, so they, because they only gave us standard conditions, now I, I have to use delta G, and that's the only thing I have to determine spontaneity. So I'm determining spontaneity only at standard conditions. Spontaneous or not? Yes. yes, it is, because it's less than zero, so it's spontaneous. Okay? All right, part B was find K. So this was part A. Part B, find K. It's the other equation that was on that sheet. Solve for K. It's uh, E raised to the negative delta G standard over RT. So E raised to the negative, and then delta G is negative. But I'm going to write what up here for delta G? Not 91.2. Yeah, 91,200 joules. Because R, which is going to go in the denominator, is given in joules. So it just makes my life more convenient. 8.3145. The temperature is 298. And... I'm going to get a K that's larger than 1 or smaller than 1. <laughs> it must be larger because it's spontaneous. So that means the forward reaction is favored. I got 9.8 times 10 uh, to the 15th power. No units. Okay, so the products are favored because K is greater than 1. Part C. Okay, part C is find the partial pressure of HCl. HCl is a gas, so I'm going to find its partial pressure. Again, assuming standard conditions, delta G standard here, and also equilibrium. So K uh, is equal to, look at the reaction here. I'll give you a moment, see if you can write the K expression for this reaction right there at the top. <laughs> Right, the K expression. That's a good question. What did I say the states were? This is a solid. These are gases. That's what I got. How would I find the partial pressure of HCl? <coughs> what method do I need to use at this moment? Technically, the ice table. You might be able to do it in your head at this moment. Uh, but if you're not able to, let me do it the long way where I write everything out. If you're able to do what I'm about, all this mess I'm going to write out right now in your head, that's totally fine. Uh, with me, unless your instructor told you differently, I suppose. So what you would do is go I, C, E. Okay, I ignore the solid. What do I put here for these values? Zero and zero, because it didn't tell you anything else. So I have to shift which way, right or left? Left, towards the zero. So plus X, plus X. X and X. So technically the K expression, which is now on the top of the screen, K, uh, which I know it's 9.8 times 10 to the 15, I just found that, is 1 over X squared. X 
I care about X because X right here, wait, no, which one did I want? I didn't want that one. <laughs> not that one, not that one. Okay, this one is equal to the partial pressure of ACCL. So if I solve for X, which I did, I got one times 10 to the minus eight. Or you gotta stick the units back on because now this is partial pressure. That's the partial pressure of NH3 and the partial pressure of HCl, which is the one I want. Okay? Uh, the last part of this question says if I add a small amount of ammonium chloride, what happens in this reaction? If I add a small amount of H, uh, NH, NH4Cl, what happens? There is no shift because it's a solid. solid. Yeah, it's a solid. Don't let me be tricky like that. Okay. All right. Does it make sense? Why does it? Why does it make sense that this is a small number? It has to be small because the right hand side is favored. K is large, so I'm expecting a small number for an answer. Okay. Any quick questions about that? I. Punched out chapter 18, done. Okay? Chapter 18, relatively easy when you focus on the equations I wrote down for you, which are right here.